Good Monday morning, prayer partners. I hope it was a good weekend for you. We continue to lift our hearts for the people of Ukraine and the atrocities that we've seen there. And we'll continue to lift our hearts in this season of Lent for our own sinfulness and repentance and the wonderful promise of amazing grace and salvation. I'll give you a moment to send yourselves and we'll begin. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim thy praise. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, grant, we beseech thee, that by the indwelling of thy Holy Spirit, we may be enlightened and strengthened for thy service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to read today, actually, the readings from Saturday. Uh, We can't just pass over 1 Corinthians 13, uh, so we'll read that this morning. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. And as for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I will know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, 
seed for sowing, and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Mark chapter 9. When Jesus saw Peter and James and John, sorry, when Jesus, Peter, James, and John came to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them and some scribes arguing with them. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe and they ran forward to greet him. He asked them, what are you arguing with them about? Someone in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak, and whenever it seizes him, it dashes him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. And I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, You faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. And they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him immediately, it convulsed the boy and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. It has often cast him into the fire or into water to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have pity on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you are able. All things can be done for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, You spirit that keeps this boy from speaking and hearing, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. After crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse. So most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he was able to stand. When he had entered the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? They said to them, This kind can come out only through prayer. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The words of that father are, I think, words for all Christians at certain times in our life. I believe. Help my unbelief. It's often a both and as we grow in belief and struggle with belief in our days. That's one of the reasons that we pray and one of the reasons that we read these scriptures to remember that Christians have been walking these paths for a long time and that Jesus does answer our prayers and is there for us. And so let us pray. I'm going to turn the camera out towards the beautiful valley, the cross and the windows. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This prayer is offered, and remembering what we've just heard about love in 1 Corinthians 13. Let us pray. O Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners, 
Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, the hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, to take upon him our nature, and then to suffer death upon the cross, giving us an example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering, and also share in his resurrection. This through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all for evermore. Amen. I pray that this day is good. Be faithful, be well, and I'll see you next time.